So this is the first of two videos that I'm making on cardinals and ordinals. Okay, so what are cardinals and ordinals? Well, they're two different types of numbers. So here I've got four fingers, right? Four fingers, one, two, three, four. Those are cardinals. Cardinals tell you how many there are in a collection of things, four fingers. First finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, those are ordinals. Ordinals tell you the order of something. So that's the fourth finger. Okay, if I'm counting from this way. First, second, third, fourth. That's the difference between cardinals and ordinals. Cardinals tell you how many there are of something. Ordinals tell you the order of the things in a collection. Well, in terms of finite sets or collections, there doesn't seem to be a big difference between the two. Cardinals and ordinals seem to be pretty much the same thing. But when it comes to infinite sets, which of course mathematicians love to talk about, there's a big difference. And that's really what I'm going to be exploring in these two videos. Cardinals and ordinals as they apply to infinite sets. And it's such an interesting subject and there's so much to say about it that I split it into two videos. So let's go ahead and discover the maths. In everyday language and arithmetic, cardinal numbers tell us how many there are in a collection of things, 1, 5, 42, and so on. Whereas ordinal numbers, as the name suggests, tell the order or position of something, 1st, 5th, 42nd, etc. The distinction between these two types of numbers seems pretty clear and not that important. Say we're talking about pencils. It's obvious that you can't have a fifth pencil without having at least five pencils in a group and that you could still have a fifth pencil even if there were seven in a group. You could also have five pencils without having a fifth pencil if you didn't put them in any order. But these little distinctions aside, we can use the same symbols for cardinals and ordinals. 1 or 1st, 5 or 5th, 42 or 42nd and so on. And not be too fussed over how cardinals and ordinals differ. However, the German mathematician George Cantor realized that when it comes to infinite numbers, the distinction becomes vitally important. To appreciate this, we need to take a quick look at an area of math that Cantor and his compatriot, Richard Dedekind, were instrumental in developing, namely set theory. A set is just a collection of things, which might be numbers or anything else, and the symbol used to show a set is a pair of curly brackets. For instance, 14925 and arrow bow 75R. They're both sets. The size of a set, how many elements it contains, is known as its cardinality and is given by a cardinal number. Both the sets just mentioned have four members or elements and so have a cardinality of four. In general, if the cardinality of two sets is the same, then every member in the first set can be paired off with one in the second so that nothing is left over. In other words, they have a one-to-one -one correspondence. For example, we can pair 1 with 75, 4 with arrow, 9 with R, and 25 with bow to show that these sets have the same cardinality. The finite cardinals, the cardinals that measure the, set, the size of finite sets, are just the natural numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. The first infinite cardinal is called aleph null and measures the size of the set of all natural numbers. For finite sets, the difference between the size of a set given by a cardinal number and its length given by an ordinal number is so slight as to be almost pedantic, but in the case of infinite sets, Cantor realized these are two very different things. To grasp how different they are, we need to understand the idea of a well-ordered set. A set is well-ordered if it satisfies two conditions. First, it must have a definite first member, and second, each subset of its members must also have a first member. The finite set 0, 1, 2, 3, for instance, is well-ordered. 
The set of all integers, on the other hand, which includes all negative whole numbers as well as all positive ones, isn't well ordered because there's no first member. The set of all natural numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on, is well ordered because despite having no specified member at the end, it has one at the start and every subset containing all the natural numbers also has a first member. Now, a key point is that well-ordered infinite sets of the same size or cardinality can have different lengths. That isn't an easy concept to grasp, even for a mathematician. Strictly speaking, we should say different ordinalities rather than lengths, but the more familiar term length helps to appreciate what's going on. Think about the sets 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, dot, dot and 0, 1, 2, 4, dot, 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 3, where the three dots mean carry on forever. Both sets contain all the natural numbers and therefore have the same size or cardinality, aleph null, but the second is slightly longer. At first, this doesn't seem to make sense. After all, if we were talking about finite sets, then it's obvious that 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 0, 1, 2, 4, 3 are identical in length because they both contain five members, but infinite sets are fiendishly counterintuitive. The set 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, dot, dot has no finite n member because the three dots tell you to carry on forever without stopping. However, 0, 1, 2, 4, dot, 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 3 is different. It too contains a sequence of members that carries on forever. However, it also contains one member that is beyond all the members of the never-ending sequence. With the 3 taken out, the sequence 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 is just as long as 0, 1, 2, 4, dot, dot, dot. In other words, you could pair off all the members of these two sequences and never have one left over. But moving the 3 to the end so that it comes after the infinite sequence adds 1 to the length. Think of it another way. With the first set, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, 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 there's a first element, 0, a second element, 1, a third element, 2, a fourth element, 3, and so on. With the second, there's also a first, 0, second, 1, third, 2, fourth, 4, etc. However, there's one element, 3, that is none of these. The ordinal we assign to 3, not the value of the number, but the order in which it appears, is greater than anything that comes before it. We need a naming system for this class of infinite numbers, which is different than the Alephs. Mathematicians call the smallest infinite ordinal, the shortest length of the set of all natural numbers, omega. The ordinality of the set 0, 1, 2, 4, dot, 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 3, where the 3 is placed after all the other natural numbers, is 1 greater, namely omega plus 1. Another way of saying this is that 3 is the w plus 1th element in the set 0, 1, 2, 4, dot, 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 3. The plus sign here is a bit confusing because it doesn't mean addition in the usual sense, but rather that omega plus 1 is the next ordinal after omega. We can add to omega, but we can't take away. The ordinality of 0, 1, 2, 4, dot, 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 with the 3 taken out, is still omega. There's no such thing as omega minus 1 which may seem strange, but that's because we're used to dealing with finite numbers. The fact is that the length of the set of all natural numbers can't be reduced no matter how large a finite number of elements is removed from it. On the other hand, its length can be increased by putting the elements that have been removed at the end. Check out the second video on this topic, Cardinals and Ordinals, Part 2, for more about the strange world of the Alephs and Omegas. Thanks for watching and see you again very soon to discover more maths.